Hello everybody and thank you for, for making time to come and listen to, uh, to me about my journey to audiology and hopefully I can convince you about this particular field and how fantastic it is. Now, as my title, um, I've written speech and hearing equals communication. And the reason I've put that in is because while I am an audiologist, which is everything to do with hearing, um, the end product for us is always about communication. So it's unavoidable that, that we kind of take into account um, speech and what we say, how, how much we understand. And, and that's what actually fascinated me about audiology. So um, welcome to, to my world of audiology and I hope you get as excited as, uh, as, as I am about this. So before I go on, I thought at least I'll, I'll tell you what an audiologist is. So an audiologist is someone who works and um, manages and helps whenever it's got to do with hearing. And it could be in babies, infants, children, adults, any age group. And that's why an audiologist can work in clinics, hospital, research labs, or like I do, I work in a university. So, so there are various uh, places an audiologist uh, could, be, could be working. A school is another place. Um, I know in America most uh, schools have at least an audiologist on board to come in for any hearing related um, uh, conversations. So some schools over here are also interested to keep one as a, as a, as a backup or a consultant. So it can happen here too. So. Um, very brief, and I'll try to be brief about my journey and how I stumbled into audiology. It all started, be, um, I, I'm actually from, from India, that's where I was born, and my siblings, uh, I think they were pretty much, the moment they started talking, they knew what they wanted to be. My whole family could be split into three professions, doctors, engineers, armed forces, that's it. And that was the one thing I thought, I want to do none of these things. They're all fun for them, not for me. So the question I had was, what am I going to do? And this is when I started looking around and, and I pretty much saw this article by an audiologist and I thought, so what is an audiologist? I assumed my sisters who are doctors would tell me what an audiologist is and they had no clue. So that made me wonder, what is it? And that got me really uh, uh, interested in it. I have to say, before I, I went on to become an audiologist, I even went to try and figure out about law. I decided, in fact, it was my dad who said, I argue a lot, maybe I should look at law as a profession. I did, I, pro I just about lasted a month. So I really needed something more challenging. And this is when um, I landed up in this uh, program in India where we get to work or, or observe and be in a hospital and clinic set up in the mornings and then go for classes in the afternoons. And I realized how fascinating my expanse of education was. I was learning about, uh, about anatomy and physiology. Doctors do that. I was learning about, in, uh, about electronics. Um, electrical matters and how Newton's laws come into play when you're trying to understand about hearing. So that was engineering aspect. And you know what? I was also learning about phonetics, which has everything to do with languages. So there were these wide areas that I was covering to become an audiologist. I thought that was fascinating. I didn't have to learn one thing. I was learning a little bit of so many different things. But what got me really hooked were the kind of cases I was, I was observing and figuring out that I could work with a child and, or an adult. Um, an adult, um, and, and uh, I'll just give you these two very impressionable cases I came across. The first one was about this law student who after a party decided that uh, being drunk and riding a bike was a good idea. So he did that and at night he was riding along and he saw two, two lights in front and he thought, oh, they're my friends. I must try and overtake from somewhere in between and say hi to them before I go to my place. Except they weren't two bikes, that was a truck. So he had a somewhat of an impact there. 
he landed up in our hospital and he was very lucky. He was wearing his helmet so that was, and, and his speed was not as high as he thought it was, which was another good thing. But nevertheless, he did have a few fractures. But what fascinated me was that here was a case where even an audiologist was needed because a part of what can happen when there's a brain injury is that there can be an impact on your hearing, there can be an impact on your ability to uh, speak. So an audiologist and a speech language pathologist are on, they have to be working with this population. Another case that was fascinating was about this young girl who really didn't like writing exams and she was pretending to have a hearing loss. And that was a, a, a very uh, sensitive but uh, interesting case because it was so different on the spectrum and here again an audiologist was needed to talk about hearing and hearing disorders and and what could be going on so that made me realize that not only do I need to know everything like a like a medical person I need to know my my physics like an engineer I need to know my rules of language, like a linguist. I need to know psychology because I need to work with people who have concerns, they have issues, and I need to be able to address all of that. So this was a field that had a very nice segue from all these different directions and work with fascinating uh, people, all ages. That's what got me hooked. So going on with, with this uh, a journey of audiology and what audiologists do, the bottom line really is when it comes to speech and hearing, these are two very different, these are two streams. They have been defined quite differently across the world, but they're both really necessary for one's ability to communicate. It's a very nice balance between science, like I was saying, and art, because you need to work in the end and translate that to people. In all over the world, there are different rules. However, in Australia, what happens is once you finish your school, you can go into an undergrad program that prepares you and gives you the background into all these different fields, which is for three years. And then from there, you go into a two-year master's program and come out with a vocation. You're ready to enter the field of speech pathology or audiology. Um, I happen to convene the master's program here and really all you need is a two-year master's degree to become an audiologist. So that's where you would be once you finish your undergrad and want to uh, uh, pursue audiology. Now what I'm going to do from now on is tell you uh, the various things audiologists do. The first one is, and this is a question we are often asked, can we test hearing in babies? What about adults? Is it the same? How young can we test these, uh, these populations? And here, this is what I wanted to say. When it comes to behavior and, the, and, and babies can sit, we can be pretty certain about their hearing by the time they're six months of age. Actually, we can know a little more about their hearing younger than that. But if we looked at the brain responses, I've tested a baby who's a month old. And in hospitals, we can test a two-day-old baby. Not that we should be calling two-day baby old. They're very new. But, but that's what. And just to give you an example, now I want you to have a look at this particular uh, graph here. What this is showing is your brain response when someone is five or six years of age up to 19 to 20 years of age. Now, depending on what your age is, somewhere along this line would be the brain response that we would gather if I had to record it from top of your head. So it changes. It changes as you grow older, as you learn new things. But this is the response of your brain to a sound. And why is this different? And I thought I would show you this. This is to show the differences between a two-year-old and a 12-year-old. And this is taken from the top of your head. If I were to take a chunk of the brain out and looked across, this is what it would look like. A two-year-old, and I want you to compare this with this, and this with this. 
Do you see how dark it is over here compared to this? This is what happens as the child who's two years of age is exposed to a lot of information, a lot of learning, a lot of um, exposure to lots of different learning things. And what you get is every time your brain is changing. And as it's changing, your response matures. So that's what, what is so fascinating. And you know what? When it comes to hearing, you can change your brain pretty much any time. Anything you practice, if you were to start learning music now, the brain will change. It is fascinating. You learn a new language and your brain would change. I'm going to play the sound and I want you to tell me, I want you to listen and figure out, can I hear this sound? Did that wake you up? <laughs> if it did, that, and, and hopefully you heard that sound. Now let's listen to this. Hopefully this is going to be a little more interesting than the previous one. Let's try this. Do you want to have a guess at what this could be? Think about it. Did it sound like somebody tapping? Could it be somebody running? What about this one? What do you think they were? Was it something falling, maybe? A branch falling? That's exactly what it was. And this was one of those cartoon characters running. Now what happened here? This is what I wanted to point out, the difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is when you, when you just listen to a sound and you say, yeah, I heard that. Listening is when you're actually trying to figure out whatever you heard, what was it? For instance, when it was this, the first sound, it was like somebody running. And when it was the second sound, it was somebody, something falling, a branch falling. So you associated meaning with that. And that's listening. So, but is hearing the same as listening? Not quite. Listening is necessary for you to be able to actually um, communicate. So if later when we have question answers, that's when we would be communicating because now, hopefully, you're listening to what I'm saying, you know what I mean, and you, would, you may have some questions about it. So going further along this difference about hearing to listening, hearing is all about just knowing there is a sound. Then what you do is you recognize what that sound is. Then what you do is you discriminate and try and figure out what that sound is. You attach meaning to that sound and last all of this together is what leads to speech understanding. And all of these are a part of listening. So not only are you hearing, you're associating meaning to that and that's a part of your listening. First step to communication. We also call this auditory processing, but it doesn't really matter. That's just another technical word. But really what you're talking about hearing is, uh, what we're talking about here is, is listening. So now let me give you some examples where listening plays a role. For instance, when you're driving down um, in a car and um, <clears throat> you hear a fire, an ambulance, police, sirens all at the same time, you'd want to know that. And the reason for that is because that's the only way you will make the decision, should I be going in this direction or stop or change directions? What about when you have um, mobile phones or any phones in your home, they're ringing. How do you come to know, is it my phone or is it mom's or is it dad's or is it my, my siblings? What about in your bag? This is something you see very often, mom with her bag, a giant bag and a phone ringing and she's digging in there, where is my phone? And that's very common. All we need to do is sit back, listen, and we would know exactly which pocket there is the phone. And that's a part of your auditory processing or listening. Now, um, when you next time listen to your iPod and MP3 player, either of those, this is what I want you to do. I want you to plug one of the earpieces in your one ear, right? Adjust your volume and say, okay, this is comfortable. Now plug the other ear in and then tell, ask yourself, is the volume comfortable now or has it become louder? 
and you may find that actually once you plug the other ear in the sound is louder and this is because the two ears are starting to work with each other that's a part of your listening it's quite fascinating give it a go if there are other things that are happening in the in your house every time you know something's happening is because of your listening or your auditory processing so why am I making such a big deal about this because because listening is the first step to understanding speech which has to do with your ability to communicate with anybody now here is a is a is a clip art where this person this kind this lady and this man they're having a conversation and the lady said that's not what I meant by adding color to your presentation she meant the presentation like the one I'm doing he thought it was about his personal effects his attire and he had a very colorful tie which is true it is colorful but not quite what she means so that is what communication is all about it is not only having to to exchange words but it's to have a meaningful conversation and that's why listening and hearing is such an important factor to your ability to communicate now this is my drawing as you can see there's a reason why I'm not an artist and not a profession I decided to follow but all I wanted to show over here was that listening may start from your pinna which is your ear but actually your listening occurs in the brain so this is showing this drum playing there are these musical notes that enter your ear which is fine but then they're getting processed all the way to the brain where you once again know that what you heard were the musical beats from this drum so this is what I'm trying to show over here as well this is a picture um, again just to show the various parts of your ear so it's not just this pinna but all the way inside your ear here and then you have from there going all the way to your brain I had this um, a case that I came across once and again something to emphasize about the difference between hearing and, and, and listening because he had uh, a tumor and it was removed so part of the brain had to be taken out he could hear but he had no understanding of what he was hearing he couldn't even make out when there was a car going or a truck horn so all your listening happens here not your ear you can plug your ear but you will still be able to hear some stuff and understand because your brain is participating um, I just wanted to actually um, tell you about this this is um, what happens inside your ear now this is showing a uh, one euro cent which is actually uh, slightly bigger than your two dollar coin Aust Australian two dollar coin and this is to show the difference between a cochlea and the scent the cochlea is very very tiny but it does a lot of fascinating stuff every time you hear something not just music your hair cell inside your cochlea they're dancing like that and responding to different levels of sound so if you speak softly or loudly or your volume is somewhere in between the hair cell respond to that and these are very very tiny 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 hair cell by the way every time you listen to very very loud music for very very long it's those hair cells they just die and you can never get them back so just just a warning there all right going on uh, and moving on from the from this uh, uh, listening the other thing I also wanted to say was and I would encourage you to try and go to your, this YouTube I'm not going to show it now but try and do this experiment where um, everything you hear right now this is very ideal ideal listening a scenario because there's only me talking right uh, but if there was a lot of conversation happening you as a listener need to separate out everything that's going on and just listen to one person and that is not easy to do but that's a part of the challenge most people have so world in general is an extremely busy place not only are you seeing a lot of things you're hearing a lot of things 
And what you need to do every time is listen to only what you want to listen. And that could be the music you have rather than myself. That's okay. But that's a choice you make every time. And this is part of the whole hearing and listening and what you need to understand. So once again, the question, why is this important? Not just for communication, it's also about learning. Quite a few classrooms can be noisy. I don't know how yours are, but some of the other classrooms I've seen, they're very noisy. And uh, but what we found is that if you listen and hear well, the reading and general learning is much better. In adults, those who have hearing loss, one of the biggest things they have is listening and noise is really hard. So that's where, again, an audiologist is really a big, big contributor to actually helping out in getting to, I guess, better hearing, better listening, and better learning. And one another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play this. Now, this could be hopefully not that loud, but, but listen to this and tell me how well or ask yourself, can I hear well when there's this, this lots of things happening? Let's see. Did you understand what it was trying to do there? It said list one. Did you hear that? It's very noisy, isn't it? But that's what happens when you go to any malls. I know the ones here right across the university really, really loud. How about this one? Here's another option. Did you hear that? It said, say pies. Now, it didn't sound quite like that. It sounded squished. But that's what happens when you're in an environment which has lots of things happening. So a lot of noise in an environment can squish or blur anything you're hearing. And as an audiologist, you need to be able to tackle that and help people understand better. I just wanted to show one of the studies that has been done, and this is basically an image of your brain when there is lots of noise. This is when the noise is not too much, but the second one where it says B is when there, the noise is quite a lot. And this is a comparison. So you're listening to something in quiet, there's no noise, but then you're listening to something when there is noise. And the areas that are lighting up in A and B are trying to show the part of brains that start to participate for you to be able to hear. The moment there is a background noise, your brain changes and has to act more. As an audiologist, we need to understand this. See what I mean? We need to know our science to be able to relate that to what's happening every day. Um, one of the studies we did, we, this is what we found, that when we look at the role of listening, what we found is listening is important for you to be able to read words and be able to do spelling. And that's what would help you understand. So. I bet you never thought listening was important about learning, but there's a study that we've done and there are others that have shown reading is linked to your listening. Another aspect that's rather important is all about uh, balance and hearing. Now, if you next time go to um, uh, uh, things like Wet and Wild or or you go to any any of those games that require you to be moving around every time it's it's a part of the balance and you know what the balance also comes from your ears for you to walk straight and in a line right you need your eyes your ears together to operate with your muscles and joints to give a message to the brain to be able to walk straight or not if you're dancing. But in any case, all of these, your ears again play a very big role in being able to manage uh, just about walking or dancing. So what does an audiologist do? We manage, diagnose everything that has to do with hearing, listening, balancing, and it's all across various ages, babies, infants, children, adults, all ages. The main thing I also wanted to highlight was 
why should you be doing or thinking about audiology apart from everything else that I've said? This is rather important. One in six Australians at this point has a hearing loss and most of those affected are over the age of 60 years. And this is going to increase by 2050 by, and become one in four. 37 of a percent of the people in general population aged 15 years and, and they s seem to have hearing consistent with that of being exposed to noise, which means they're already at risk of having a hearing loss. So can you imagine your role if you were to become an audiologist, how much, how important that's going to be? Another aspect is that it, according to WHO, World Health Organization, over 275 million people across the world have a hearing loss. And that it is likely hearing loss is going to become seventh leading dis disease problem or disorder, which is even higher than HIV and diabetes. Once again, emphasizing the importance of, of hearing and hearing related uh, disorders and the audiologists. Another fact that you may want to, but that you may find fascinating, Africa with its, um, it's got about 50 countries, I think, and there are just two programs in the whole of the continent. They're just not enough audiologists to deal with the problems of hearing. So, um, uh, lastly, I just wanted to give a few websites um, where you can have all of this information that's available just uh, for an audiologist. And if you're interested in speech pathology as well, it's available. And another uh, thing, just so you know, we have a Facebook page that I keep loading some of the fascinating studies which have to do with audiology or hearing. And on 12th of September, we're going to have the Macquarie University Open Day. So if you really wanted to know about profession and where you want to, what you want to do after your um, school, something to think about. Um, this is where we are housed in Macquarie University. It's uh, Australian Hearing Hub. Again, one of the, f one of the, uh, the only one actually in the world where you've got um, the university as well as all the research labs and clinics housed in one place. So it's quite special and it's here, it's here in Sydney in Macquarie University. So thank you for listening. Please ask questions. Every time you're translating research, you need to work with people. You need to, so the art is all about being able to explain and relate it to, to people and, and be able to explain whatever um, the hearing, the role of hearing and listening is. That's the part of art, the human link. That was a long time ago, but what I did was pretty much um, um, after my school, um, so I completed my schooling in, when I was um, 19, and I pretty much started with my three-year undergrad and went on to do my master's um, in, in audiology. So pretty much since then. And in between, I decided, oh, it was getting rather boring. Let me do um, computer science, but I didn't. I came back to audiology within a month. So, yeah, it's been a long time. Please don't ask me how old I am now. Let's just say it's been a few years. Working with um, all populations, I work with babies, so I get to cuddle these tiny babies who are very, very nice and sweet. I wouldn't get to work with um, young children who never listen to anything I have to say, but they always, always uh, challenge me. And I work, get to work with young adults and teenagers. So, so uh, my research pretty much enable, and my clinic work enables me to work with all ages. And that's what I, I, I love because everyone is so different. Babies are so different from adults. Adults never listen, it's challenging.
I can tell you that last few years it has pretty much been consistent at 85. But you know that every year it changes a bit, but um, it has been about stable at 85. to say I work with children more uh, but occasionally I do work with adults as well so as an audiologist you can choose so I have uh, a few students who find it very scary to work with children and they only work want to work with adults and that's fine you can have clinics that are dedicated to adult work um, there are some students who love working with children and babies and their pediatric centers they work there so so you get to choose or not if you don't want to. Audiology at the moment, we've got every state has a program. So we've got, um, uh, in fact, and in Victoria, there are two programs, La Trobe University, Melbourne University. They both have audiology program. And uh, New South Wales, it's only Macquarie University. Um, Queensland, there is a uh, University of Queensland. Um, then there is um, Ed Adelaide has Flinders University and Western Australia, well, University of Western Australia. There could be a number of reasons. Some, uh, it, it can start when um, they could be born with a hearing loss which often has to do with um, uh, uh, being exposed um, to uh, some kind of a, a disorder that meant they needed to take some an antibiotics or very strong antibiotics. That could have an impact. Sometimes it has to do with genetics. Sometimes it has to do with the environment uh, the mum was. Sometimes it comes along later in the year, um, ex being exposed to a lot of noise that rock music, if you listen to it for over eight hours continuously with headsets, uh, that's a problem. So, uh, so give your ears a break and, and that's helpful. Um, so there are a number of reasons. It could be disorder, genetics, environment. a study that said that most people change their careers seven times in their lifetime. So I um, did think about it um, and like I was saying in between I thought I would do computer science and I tried that barely a month and I said no and I came back. So in the field of audiology I have been pretty much consistent at it for a couple of decades, I have to say. Um, I've tried different things in between, but not really. I come back to audiology. There's just so much diversity even within this field. It's a very new science. It's a very new field. There's so much um, that's, that's changing. Like I was saying, cochlea is this tiny. It's small, as small as your $2 coin. And there's so much that's happening in that space that we don't understand. So it's a, it's a good place to be if you want to learn something new, discover something new. So, so I'm afraid I haven't challenged my seven changes at all. It hasn't worked for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>